clarify some misinformation that is circulated. Myself and all the members of the Washoe County Sheriff's Office family and first responders send our thoughts and prayers to Mr. Renner, his family, and friends, and we share our sincere hope for a full and speedy recovery. With that said, here's what I can tell you today. On Sunday morning at 8.55 a.m., a 911 call was received for a 1050 or a crash involving a snowcat versus pedestrian. The subject had been run over by a snowcat in the area of Mount Rose Highway. At 8.57, Washoe County Dispatch advised some units and they started en route. Here's where I want to elaborate on the weather and the road conditions at that hour. The previous e evening, we had seen approximately three feet of snow fall in the Mount Rose area and multiple cars were abandoned on the multiple roads, including Mount Rose Highway. Additionally, while it was not snowing at the time of the accident, Mount Rose Highway was closed at that hour because of severe winter weather of snow which had not been yet removed from the highway. At 9.30, the first Washoe County Sheriff's Office unit arrived on scene. The delay again was a direct result of the weather, the traffic moving around abandoned cars in the roadway, and the closure of Mount Rose Highway. When the first Washoe County Sheriff's Office unit arrived on scene, Medical, Truckee Meadows Fire Protection District, and North Lake Tiles Fire Protection District uh, were on scene. At 9.37, care flight landed in the vicinity of Mount Rose Highway. At 9.56, Mr. Renner was taken via care flight to a Reno area hospital. Now for some details of the accident as we currently know them. I want to be clear here, as well as going on a major accident investigation, and we are handling it as we would any other major, major accident investigation. We are still conducting interviews and processing items from the scene. Based on our investigation, Mr. Rennard's personal vehicle, which was being driven by a family member, had become snuck in the snow near his home. Mr. Renner went to retrieve his piston bully, or snowcat, an extremely large piece of snow removal equipment weighing at least 14,330 pounds, in an effort to get his vehicle moving. After successfully towing his personal vehicle from its stuck location, Mr. Renner got out of his piston bully to speak to his family member. At this point, it was observed that the piston bully started to roll. In an effort to stop the rolling piston bully, Mr. Renner attempts to get back into the driver's seat of the piston bully. Based on our investigation, it's at this point that Mr. Renner is run over by the piston bully. An eyewitness detailed seeing Mr. Renner getting into the piston bully and not seeing him again until the piston bully came to arrest in a pile of snow in front of his driveway. At this point in the investigation, we do not believe Mr. Renner was impaired at all, and we believe this is a tragic accident. The Washoe County Sheriff's Office is in possession of his piston bully, and we are analyzing it to rule out any potential mechanical failure of why it may have started to roll. This is, in part, of, this is part of our normal investigation process for any major investigation. As I mentioned earlier, this investigation is ongoing. However, we do not suspect any foul play. I want to repeat that. We do not suspect any foul play. We believe this was a tragic accident. On behalf of the Washington County Sheriff's Office, I want to thank Chief Summers from North Lake Tahoe and all of his personnel, and Chief Moore from Truckee Meadows Fire Protection District, Care Flight, uh, and all of our regional partners who assisted in responding to this accident. And with that, if there's any questions, I'll answer a few questions. Otherwise, can, can anyone drive a, a snowcat? Is that something you need a license for? Or? That was, it was on a private road, so he can drive that snowcat. Uh, and in this instance, as Mr. Renner always does, those private roads, he was being a great neighbor, and he was plowing those roads for his neighbor because up there, again, they had three feet. Sheriff, I just wanted to make sure I clarified on something you said. You said the snowcat started to roll. I presume that means it was rolling over. On its no, side. it started just to move forward. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, for that, we're going to refer to the family. I believe they made a statement earlier today um, on his uh, well-being. And again, all we want to say from all of us here as first responders, uh, we are keeping him and his family and friends in our thoughts and prayers. So you're, get, you're looking at the, the plow thing to see if it had a mechanical issue. Was it, was it run? It was still running. You don't know if it was like, does that device have a park? It, it has a park. And so uh, like we would because of... Uh, this having such severe injuries, we want to make sure that with that mechanical machine that was there any mechanical failure, had he put in park, whatever. So that's anything we would do on any major investigation that we had. 
And so this is just something that uh, we'll impound, we'll have our mechanics and our uh, major accident investigation team go through and rule out that. Was medical, did anyone here up to, or any of the officers who responded provide any kind of medical treatment uh, when you arrived? You know, I would say they all did. Um, and uh, after uh, Mr. Renner was run over by the piston bully, there were some uh, neighbors that also brought out some towels to help. So, you know, I want to thank them as well for their quick response in helping Mr. Renner while all of us first responders were responding. But uh, first aid was rendered to him. Was it hard for the, the helicopter to land, given the conditions? It, it was, and that's why it took him a little bit. As I know there's a video already out there on social media. Um, just because of the weather, all of the snow that we had just gotten, it, they had to find a safe landing zone for it. Uh, what I can tell you was uh, there was no doctor on scene. It was some um, good neighbors of Mr. Renner's that came out with some towels and rendered some aid. And that's what I can say. And did, they, did they tie a tourniquet? That part I do not know. I just know that they came out with some towels and helped them until uh, all of the first responders could get there. Do you know how much snow there was up there at the time? There was about three feet that we had just received on top of whatever else they had received prior to this big snowstorm, but three feet of fresh snow. Did that complicate the rescue? It did because Mount Rose was closed. Uh, and as you may have uh, noticed uh, during that time, we had about 13 to 20 cars that were abandoned from the bottom of Mount Rose all the way to the top. So trying to get them and get around uh, for the fire engines, the ambulances, that's why, again, for fire, they collaborated from both sides of the Mount Rose Highway and came together to help. I just wanted to clarify, you said he was trying to get back into the snow plow. Was he able to get back in and then was thrown out? or he just That part we don't know. Uh, we're waiting to talk to Mr. Renner. What sort of condition was he in when you guys arrived? Did he, was he conscious? He was speaking to the first responders. And I've seen it reported that he suffered chest wounds and some, some orthopedic injuries. Can you comment on whether or not... That part I don't know. I'd have to refer you to the family and let them answer those or the hospital. Do you have any details on how common an accident with a snowcat is? No, not off the top. I, I would have to tell you probably there's always at least, uh, because this type of snowcat is one you'd see at ski resorts, um, that there's always these type of injuries or accidents uh, that occur. But I, the exact number I do not know. So it was on his property, not on Mount Rose Highway? It was on a private road. On a private road, and then the neighbors that he helped dig out are all part of that private road? They're all on a private a road. private road, so they, he never has to go on to public property. No. And approximately how far from the summit, roughly, would that be? A couple miles. Who called 911? Uh, I, that one I don't know if it was the neighbors or his family member. I know uh, a lot of people have talked about the impact he has had in the community donating to things and charity drives, what has been your relationship with him? You know, he is a honorary deputy sheriff, uh, and so when I took office in 2019, uh, he came and with um, his popularity amongst kids and the Marvels, um, he has a huge impact. Um, those kids that he touched during Shop with the Sheriff, uh, he showed up and Shop with our kids. Um, I can guarantee they will never forget that moment that they got. He uh, shared his time with us there and not only shopped with a few kids, but interacted with the kids. So. He's had a huge impact, not only in this office, in helping us with our outreach with Shop with the Sheriff, which is our biggest event, but throughout the community, he has been very generous. And he's one of those individuals that I can tell you, most of the time you don't know uh, that he's doing it, but he has made a tremendous impact on this community. Did he do Shop for the Sheriff this year? Uh, this year he did not. And what's kids' reactions when they do see him? They know who he is? They know exactly who he is, and they call him Hawkeye. Um, and they are super excited. Um, even sometimes the parents may be a little more excited than the kids, but uh, for us, that's a great thing with the Shop of the Sheriff uh, when we do that, and to see those kids and the impact he has uh, has been truly impactful. Is it common for people in that area to own uh, piston bullies or snow cats? Absolutely, or plows or something because they're private roads, and so they get a lot of snow, and that's they're on roads that are not maintained by the county, so they have their own means to plow their, their driveways and their roads. Okay, with that I want to say thank you again for coming. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time. And again, our thoughts and prayers are Mr. Rinder and a speedy recovery. Thank you very much.
Thanks, everybody. One more question. You've 